Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 78, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T, <clears throat> excuse me, 23 at comcast.net and I'll do my best to answer them. And this first one is a prepper guide request. It's from Angela. She says, 100 page prepper guide PDF. That's it. There's actually, that's just the title. That's from Angela Abraham. And yes, if anybody wants a prepper guide, it's 100 pages. It's free. I wrote it after I watched the whole um, uh, Katrina debacle. And it's, it's about two megs, not very big at all. But if I send it to you, by all means, please print it out because I think that's important. Uh, let's see, this one's called 42 Months, and since it's Sunday, it's got a little chapter and verse in it. Pretty appropriate. This one uh, goes a little something like this. Greetings, Brother Mark. Behold, it is written, the serpent, ser wow, serpent deceived man when he convinced Eve God's word wasn't true. Revelation, a surprisingly and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. <clears throat> It is written in Revelation in a vision to John, the beast was given a mouth uttering proud boasts and blasphemies, and it was given authority to act for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling and those who dwell in heaven. From July 16th, 1969 to December 19th, 1972, a period of 42 months, NASA said they went to and from one of the great uh, one of the great lights God placed in the firmament, which he calls heaven. They did this by making Apollo films, showing the generation of our beloved forefathers, movies of 12 men in total, bouncing and jumping around on what they want us to believe was the moon. After a period of the aforementioned 42 months, they stopped making their Apollo movies. Strong's Concordance, Nasha to Beguile, Deceive, original word. They do have a blatantly obvious big red serpent's tongue on their logo, and I believe they were deliberately blaspheming God's words. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. When they composed their false circle of the earth, a 1969 picture from their round window, by the way, it was 1972, uh, via deceitful depth and lighting tactics. 42 months, my friend, it is written in the book. Thoughts? Stay good and manly. Brother Mark, and that's from Robert. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't know if it's the 42 months, but there are parallels in a whole bunch of different stories. So why not? That's very interesting. July 69 to December 72. My only problem with that is that the Apollo missions started way before 1969. Uh, they just don't talk about them. Supposedly they went, they did round trips around the moon and didn't land, but, but I like it. I like it. I like where your head's at. I like where you're going with this. Anybody that thinks outside the box, I totally respect. So, great. This one's called Slide Show Slide and a Quote. Mark, this is a bumper from Late Night with David Letterman circa 1982. I thought it would be a fun addition to your slideshow. And the quote is me paraphrasing Jeffrey Ross. I wouldn't F the globe with B. Arthur's dick. <laughs> That's from Brendan. I don't know if I can use that in my slides. You know, I, I try to keep it not exactly family friendly, but uh, try to keep the sensors away from me, just to let you know. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Please send me a copy of your survival guide. My girlfriend and I were in Denver recently, and we were hoping to grab coffee with you. Next time we pass by, we'll shoot or call or text. Love your work, Brett and Maziel. I, I have never known him. M-A-S-I-E-L. Never known a Maziel. If Ma Maciel, uh, it doesn't matter. Never, never used that name before. And no, I'm not in Denver. I'm I'm up north of Seattle. So even if you do come come by Denver, I mean I'll be in Denver for the conference this uh, fall. But even if you do come by Denver, I'm not there anymore. I was in Boulder for 20 years, and now I'm up in Seattle, where I was born and raised. This one's called X15 Plane Question on Math. Hi, Mark. The X-15 plane has a record for the fastest flight of 4,520 miles an hour. If my math is correct, then this would mean they would have to dip the nose of the plane around 62 feet a second. 
Have you heard if this is true? It is much faster than the speed of a bullet at around 2,500, so they can't have it both ways. Either the Corollis effect is true, and the speed of a bullet breaks the atmosphere as well as the plane, or neither do. Thoughts? Chad Southworth. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's a question we've been posing for a while now, which is when does a plane officially become a bullet? And when is a bullet slow enough that it doesn't take into account the Coriolis effect, the spinning of the earth? When does that happen? Science won't, won't give us that. When Where is that breaking point? Because as you know, spy planes can get up really, really fast. The X-15 is faster than a spy plane, but the SR-71 is really, really fast. And the mythical Aurora project which we can't even photograph that plane it's so fast uh, we can only photograph its exhaust trails it's got to be around the same thing so are they taking that into account i don't think so this one's called the throne of god unification paper from a biblical perspective by dale and it might be a, yeah it's a little long if you guys write like three or four pages i, I, I can't read it on this show just to you, so you know, but it's from Wendell. Uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the review on, on the paper. If anybody wants the Throne of God unification paper, it's called Harmony. It's on my machine. And it was a paper mentioned when the air traffic controller met the flight instructor on Strange World. And I had them talk to each other and it's pretty cool. So I'm not going to, I can't read your letter. It's just too long, but, uh, but thank you for that. It's good. This one's called Survival Guide and Coast to Coast. Thanks, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, also, if anybody wants the Coast to Coast interviews, as you know by now, I cannot put them on YouTube or reproduce them. I actually had to sign a, dis you know, a release form saying that I couldn't use it. So there you go. Uh, this one's called, Please, Do You Received My Previous Message? Ooh, this, this sounds good. Um, I'll, I'm going to read this. Greetings. I am Mr. Nelson Mark, an attorney by profession in Lomtog, West Africa. I know you will be surprised to receive this important information that requires your urgent attention. I need your interest in helping me claim the sum of $20,900,000 and 150 kilograms of gold bar that belonged to my late client, a nationality of your country. He deposited this valuable in a bank here in Lome, Togo, before his untimely death with his entire family without a written will left behind. If you are interested, kindly use your direct email address to reach me by my private email contact for more details. I wait your final consent so that I can give you full details. Please, you can contact me in this private email address uh, or call me on my private line. Thanks. Best regards, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm totally yeah, going to contact this guy. I have to. It's... I, who doesn't want a piece of this action? Twenty, almost twenty-one million dollars and one hundred fifty kilograms of gold bar, which would be millions in its own. Uh, the 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 gold bar is a nice touch, by the way. Um, I, I read this just just to be kind of fun because it was blind copied to me and a whole bunch of other people. Of course, we we've seen this. What's amazing to me is that this scam is still going after all these years. I'm old enough to remember that. I mean, it started almost a, almost immediately after the internet uh, e email addresses and, and forums and everything came online uh, where people figured out they could do bulk emails. This thing was almost immediate and it was amazing that after oh God, it's been 20 something years, 20 something years and this thing is still going out there and they love sending it to Americans because Americans are notoriously greedy and there's older people that fall for this all the time. It's like, oh yeah, I could use it as some extra scratch. 20 something years and the emails hardly vary at all it's it's i mean it's amazing i i think this will probably outlast even the uh you must update your bank account information scam anyway let's move on just had to read that because i get those every day but thought i'd just throw it in there this one's called myrtle beach mark while listening to the latest subject matter expert on his statements on myrtle beach and the grand strand i never knew that it was the largest continuous public beach my parents have had a place here for 30 years and literally heard that on my front porch down here just drove down love coming down here started a new tradition of waking at 5 30 a.m driving the cart to beach for sunrise and aimlessly walking around and writing google flat earth clues nasa lied and 200 proofs the earth is not a sphere in the sand <laughs> nice had a lot of good conversations with people walking during those early hours uh, the sand writings provide a billboard for those smoking cigarettes first thing in the morning on their hotel balconies. Eh, good one. like it. 
some subtle flat earth activism. That's from Virgil. Thank you, Virgil. This one's called Plane. Hello, my name is Phil Simmons. Uh, how much do you think it costs to fly from Michigan to Italy? <laughs> what? And he spelled Italy wrong. He spelled it A-T-I-L-I. I, I have no idea, Phil. I, I, I have no idea, but the email is interesting enough and brief enough that I thought I'd address it. Um, look it up. Easy. Priceline.com. I'm sure, I'm sure you can find some flights. What does he think I am? A travel agent? This one's called I Had to Get It Out. Mr. Sergeant as... Oh, boy. Oh, my Lord. This one has no... By the way, if you write an email to me with no punctuation and it's four pages long, I'm absolutely not going to read it. Uh, let's see. Mark Sergeant has requested Drew Bradley's comment posted under first interview re-uploaded by Seventh Day Truth Seeker. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I can't. Can't. Not, not with out punctuation by, by that i mean there's some punctuation in there but there's no paragraph breaks that's what i'm really getting at put in your freaking paragraph breaks i trying to be a grammar nazi or a paragraph nazi i'm just saying this one's called movie quotes mark you must go now quickly if they find out you've seen this your life will be worth less than a truckload of dead rats in a tampon factory uh i've tried everything the embassy the german government the consulate i've even talked to the un ambassador it's no use i just can't bring my wife to orgasm have you ever tried one of these pulls out a big box from under the bed oh it's from a it's it's a movie quote hint val kilmer it's got to be uh top secret yeah it's good yeah movie quotes uh let's see the first one uh you must go i i some of those are pretty obscure uh it's got to be top secret though right they must see the German government, the consulate. It's no, I, yeah, that's good. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, if anyone wants to send me movie quotes, try to be a little, little easier than that. Because remember, it's, um, I, I like quotes that at least somebody out in the audience would know besides me. It's good. This one's called Note from Vienna. Mark, I'm very curious. If we live on a flat earth, how can we have a core? If we do not have a core, where does the hot molten lava for the volcanoes come from? And where can I find out what does the earth really look like? I have more questions and looking forward to learning more. Thank you for your time, Verna from Salinas, California. Oh, she's on the beginning of her journey and hopefully she's already looked into the clues by now. In fact, it's really interesting that she wrote me, even though after I did a clue that kind of talked about volcanoes. Everything's artificial. Everything. Including lava. Why not? Molten rock is, again, not hard to do. This one's called Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, the Second Cataclysm. Uh, Elon Musk is credited to one of the rocket scientists in this. And it's called Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, the Second Cataclysm. Also, this is funny. Astronaut left his SD card at home. Astronaut can't GoPro working without an SD card. That's from Matthew Dickinson. Thank you very much for that. This one's called Satellites. Hi, Mark. Last night, I was out after dark to water the garden because it was too hot during the day. As per the norm for me, I took up to, I took, I look up to the skies to perhaps to figure things out. We are all accustomed to seeing those traveling lights, assumed to be satellites, that go from horizon to horizon. This is where it got weird. This time, the light was particularly bright, making it easy to notice and also much brighter than any other night. Uh, now add to that a second traveling light at the same time, less as bright, but traveling in the exact direction on the exact path as the larger one. If you were to hold out your hand, it would be three to four finger widths behind the larger light. I have a theory that NASA developed the satellite story to prove a way to distract what the lights really are. Yeah, 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 I, I, I agree. If they do know or not, it doesn't really matter, but it takes people away from putting any more thought into what's really up there. It sure wouldn't be two satellites a few miles apart. Yeah. Absolutely right. If anyone has any doubt, pick up some uh, night vision binoculars. I use a night owl, a Russian made uh, five five power, and wait till your eyes adjust and start looking up there. It's amazing. It's it's really like they live when you start looking with night vision binoculars. The sky is just crawling with things. Most of the time, you cannot see them with your naked eye, which is makes perfect sense because when it comes to anything up there, uh, like cars, cars work just fine with the headlights off. And so it makes you wonder why UFOs want to be noticed. Why why turn on your running lights? Hmm? And why most of them don't. This one's called Girls. 
Uh, hi, Mark. Get Karen B. and Patricia on your show. Do a show just on psychology. Women are great at seeing through men's BS. That's from Dave. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I don't know if Karen B. or Patricia would be a good one to, a good pair to do on psychology. They've done stuff themselves. They're, they're great. I, I think both of them are top notch. Top notch. Uh, this one's called Five Scientific Questions. Mark, please send me this. Thanks. Keep up the work. That's from Michael. And that's another thing I've got on my machine. The scientific questions I sent to the professor at Georgetown University uh, at the request of a German television company who wanted to come up with a debate between flat earth and science. And uh, the five questions I've got them on my machine, but they're real easy. I'll, I could send you, I mean, they're only like a paragraph each, but I'll, I'll rattle them off to you real quick. Uh, long distance photography, that's one. Vacuum versus uh, vacuum space versus gravity. That's two. The eclipse shadow size. That's three. The moon temperature. That's four. And the Van Allen belts. That's five. Uh, five scientifically based questions that nobody nobody can answer. Even if they could go after the long distance of photography and say it's refraction, they're doomed on the others. So if you want them and you want to use them against people, by all means, just um, send me an email and say, hey, five scientific questions. I will send them to you. This one's called, could you please explain this or direct me to someone who can? Mark, have you ever gone outside at night and laid down on your back on the sand and grass and fixated your gaze on a light in the sky for several minutes without moving? There is a surprising and deniable effect that occurs where as either the sky above you is moving or the ground you're laying down on us is. I, for one, cannot explain this in regards to the flat earth, nor can I get anyone to try this who can, who can. Might you be able to or point me in the direction of someone who can? Thank you for your time, Scott. I laid down and stared at a single point in the sky. I, I, are you? I, I'm not exactly sure where you're going with this. Because if you're staring at a st just any given star, you feel like everything's moving. And are you doing this sober? So if anyone wants to go out there and try this and, and let me know, by all means, please, please do. This one's called Flat. Greetings, Mark. My name is Mike Leas. I'm 33. My location is Western Ohio. I've been studying flat earth for quite a while now. I've always been one to question what is in front of me when things don't add up. I came across your clues video about two years ago. My family and most friends ridiculed me over this. My employment consists of installation, repair, and maintenance of my company's wireless residential internet network. I know nearly every road across central Indiana. I daily drive two to 300 miles from my home in Ohio, which is around 10 miles east of Indiana, to sometimes clear over to nearly the Illinois state line. It's flat as hell out here. No other way to put it. I climb some tall towers. The view is flat out great. Any plans for Indiana or Ohio meetup? Would love to chat it up with others who have similar views. I only have two friends that are on a similar page as myself. I always wondered if that number on your videos was legit. Yeah, it's absolutely legit. I called and found out for myself. Props to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a real number. I'm not going to turn it off until it may, it may, if I get really, really popular and the phone just won't stop ringing ever and I won't be able to catch it with my voicemails. Yeah, then maybe I might turn it off, but I'll, I'll let it go as long as I can. Uh, I have 1,500 subscribers in my network area. I'd say 60, 70 percent uh, by customers have my cell number. My phone doesn't quit sometimes. I could only imagine the calls you get. I, I do get quite a few calls, but not as many as you might think, because remember I said in the beginning, I go, remember I said in the first clue, I go, I know nobody calls anymore. Most people like to text or email. And I've never, again, never sent a text in my life. So, but I will read the text. Also wondering if you're familiar with Brian Austin Lambert 33, the YouTube channel. Just came across it last week. Some things sounded interesting. Would love to hear some of your feedback on his theory. Shoot me an email here or my cell phone number, call or text, no voicemail or setup. Why do you not have a voicemail setup? Shame on you. I will chat flat any day. Mike Leas sent from my iPhone. Cool. <clears throat> and as far as Ohio is concerned, sorry, I need to drink a lemonade. Just did the treadmill this morning. Because it's Sunday morning. Um, uh, if you're curious about any meetups, type, type in Flat Earth Meetup and set the filter to a year or a month or set it to a city near you and you'll find, you know, the closest city to you. Uh, there's been so many meetups I, I've lost track, but I'm yeah, in fact, we, we just did some in Ohio just recently. Or I think there's one coming up. I can't remember. This one's called Signing Up. 
Hi, Mark. There is a person on YouTube to whom I've been swapping messages about Flat Earth. At least he is not abusive at all, which is refreshing. He sent me this message and links as proof that the Flat Earth is a deception and the Flat Earthers are telling lies. Ooh, I'm curious. I haven't watched it yet, but I thought I would send it to you to look at. And that's from Cammy. Uh, if you have the proof that the Earth is a spinning ball, why don't you show it? I have tried. They ignore the evidence I present. You state you have proof they are leaving out info and deceiving. Yes, for example, this one, uh, and there's links. It intentionally put the camera below it so that the arrow would drop. If he had the camera at the same height, the arrow would be unaffected. If he had the camera above, the arrow would have moved upwards. It's simple refraction, and the properties of it have been known about for hundreds of years. Take a look at Snell's Law, that's S-N-E-L-L-S, if you haven't, and this one by Eric DeBay. The claim that the horizon always rises to eye level is very easily debunked by something as simple as the spirit level or something like this. Theodolites also show the horizon drop with great accuracy, and the claim that it is always perfectly hor horizontal was easily accidentally debunked by flat earthers trying to prove it. Often... They even contradict their earlier statements as long as it's their current argument. And don't get me started on Brian Mullen. He's the worst of them since he actually knows what he's talking about pretty well, but leaves out information to skew the results. You are knowledgeable and eloquent, Mark. Maybe you should look at these as well. Blessings, John Clover. Is he writing this to me? Um, hmm. All right. I don't know what to tell you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I've heard all this stuff before. This one's called Calgary-based photojournalist wants to make contact with you. Hello, Mark. My name is Gregory Rogalski, and I'm a Calgary-based photojournalist who is very curious of Flat Earth. First of all, thank you for your most excellent material you have released on YouTube. Very helpful in my investigation of Flat Earth. So, as I have said, I'm a photographer, and I'm interested in doing some projects of Flat Earth. Any suggestions? Are you going to the Flat Earth Conference coming up in Edmonton this summer? Yes, I am. I'm, I'm one of the speakers there. My photography can be seen on Gregory, Gregory Rogalski Facebook. I hope to hear back from you. Kind regards. Regards, Gregory. And did I write him back? Yeah, yeah, I wrote him back. Cool. I don't think I, I don't think I've heard back from. Him, but I am going to the conference, so maybe I'll run into him there. This one's called Spinning Ball. Share first name only, please. Okay. Mark, I have been catching up on your Strange World episodes for several months now. I believe I started somewhere around Strange World 100. I'm now closing in on real time. I listen to your shows on my drive to work, which is only about an hour one way anyways entertaining at four minutes 30 seconds your program has aided me in having more confidence to debate some of the stronger minded individuals in my life granted i tend to pick them out because i know that once they wake up they'll be a force to be reckoned reckon with armed with truth while i have had several flat earth discussions with family friends and even a co-worker it still astonishes me how much emotion is attached to this subject programming right emotions are the easiest to play on my brother asked me if nasa faked everything why were there problems he is referencing apollo 13 I told that we love tragedy. We admit it, but we do. Tragedy makes it believable, relatable, emotional. Yeah, exactly right. And it gave him an excuse to kind of start winding down the program. Enough rambling. I do apologize. I'm excited to be finally emailing you. I fell into a YouTube spiral today and stumbled across this video. Uh, while the video is cut and the precision is definitely in question, it does raise a valid point. How fast is the earth spinning? The gist of the video is firing a 50 caliber rifle straight up and timing the bullet impact. The uh, the time that they got was 1.50 or 110 seconds. The maximum altitude of the round is irrelevant. Time is the key. According to the scientificamerica.com, the speed of the earth is at the equator is 460 meters per second. Uh, 460 times 110 is 50,000 six. 600 meters of missing travel. Please advise if I'm not correct in any of this. Thanks for your time, Mark. I hope to meet you someday. I'm heading up to y'all's neck of the neck of the woods this summer. Well, past the Red River, anyhow. Thanks again. And that's from John. Yeah, John. No, just first name. And his phone number, not for publication. And there's a quote. Blinding ignorance does mislead us. Oh, wretched mortals. Open your eyes. And that's from Leonardo da Vinci. Awesome. Yeah, I, 
I, I'll, I'll watch the video on the on the 50 caliber bullet and and see what's going on there. See if I can determine anything. I will. This one's called vacuum. Hi, Mark. I hear you talking about going in a vacuum chamber. That would be very dangerous. You should first get a small chamber and put a car wheel and tire in there or a smaller mower tire. If you can find a big enough chamber to hire, buy an old car and put the whole car in there. Why am I putting a car in a vacuum chamber? Oh, and for the conference, you should take the media to a body of water or salt flat and show them a test. It's going to be tough because it's going to be in Denver. Uh, also, that planer surveyor should speak at the next conference. If It would go viral if you named it Tesla Tires Lie. And that's from Dave. Thanks, Dave. Uh, but yeah, if somebody wants to put me in a vacuum chamber, I'd be happy to do it. Absolutely. This one's called Astronaut in Vacuum Chamber Video. And it's not coming up. There's no link. Come on. This is from Tim. If it bothers to come up. And it's acting really slow. So let's go on to the next one. And that one's... I'll, I'll jump back to the other one here in a second. I was having a hard time loading it. This one's called Experiment Idea. Hey, Mark. Hope you are well. Would like to start by saying that I have been following your videos for around a year and a half. Thanks for all you do. The idea I have is this. To find the effect rotation has on water or an enclosed spherical object spinning in a vacuum. I haven't seen anyone perform this experiment and I don't have access to the required materials and tools to do this myself. Basically, you would have a golf ball with a metal shank going through with some transparent material surrounding it. Uh, slightly larger and elevated off the surface. Water can be placed in the bottom half of the encased and the top half be secured and sealed with the water inside. And then attach the mock earth to a Dremel or drill that can be turned via remote switch and secure with a vacuum chamber. Evacuate the chamber and activate the rotational device set to the cl closest speed as possible to the supposed rotation of the earth. Film with high def slow motion camera if possible to determine the effects. Would love feedback on the idea. Probably has been suggested before, uh, but I can't find anything. Could be my ineptitude using the internet. Thanks, Scott. Um, <clears throat> it's not a bad idea, Scott, except that, that you got your, your biggest problem is you're actually working in an, a gravity environment. So the test I like, I, I really like the test, but you'd have to be able to do that test uh, in a negative gravity environment. Uh, the, the ISS, for example, would be a, a good one to do this test on. Uh, and you'd also have to do it really, really slow. Uh, Dremel, you don't need a, a Dremel to do this. You could do this with anything. Uh, but yeah, you couldn't you couldn't do this test on Earth because of the gravity. Just to let you know. This one's called, let's see if I can load this one. Astronaut in vacuum chamber. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, hey Mark, first off, thank you for what you do. Me and my wife love your videos, even though we're, uh, we're obviously crazy now from believing it in the flat Earth. We were watching your video when you had the USGA surveyor come back on after two years and you guys were talking about how NASA trains in a pool and not in a vacuum chamber and how there's no videos of one being used in a chamber. Well, I found one for you and it is good as you could have hoped for. After 15 seconds, the guy passed out and his saliva started to boil so i hope this helps yep and you can look it up it's called nasa vacuum chamber why they don't test with astronauts flat earth yeah yeah it's a it's a reprint of you can find this again find me find me videos of astronauts in an actual vacuum chamber you just don't do it they had to gloss that over which was in fact there's some early nasa footage not to go off on a rant here but there's some early astronaut um, astronaut footage when they were trying to figure out what to make the spacesuit out of, and they realized that a fabric was not going to work because a fabric would just turn into a balloon when exposed to a vacuum. Because that's all it is. Remember, a balloon is, you know, you got high pressure inside the balloon and lower pressure outside. That's how a balloon works. And when you're talking, it doesn't matter what the balloon, if it's a fabric, it's going to react the same way. It's going to expand until it gets as tight as it can. And, and it's going to be unusable if a person's inside it. And so they're thinking of making the suit out of plastic and metals and all this other crap. And they couldn't come up with a, a solution. And then all of a sudden, just before the missions, they switched back to fabric. And that was it. They just, oh yeah, we're, we're going to use fabric. It's like, how, how'd you solve the vacuum problem? Uh, well, we just did. How? How, how, how did you do it? They never, ever explained it, how, how they solved the, the issue of putting a, f a fabric suit in a vacuum. It never, ever worked, which is why my vacuum challenge is out there. It's like, there's, and, and even if you could say that you solved it in 2018 with microprocessors, how did you solve the vacuum 
uh, suit problem in the 1960s. In early 1960s, forget about Apollo, which was 1969, supposedly you're doing spacewalks a long time before that. So how'd you do it? There's no answers. NASA has literally no answers. What magical, magical thing was in those backpacks when they were walking around the new, uh, in the, uh, on the moon that could uh, counteract the, the vacuum? This doesn't exist. This one's called No Subject. Mark, this is Chrisley from Seymour, Indiana. That's right, the hometown of John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> I've been following the Flat Earth movement for about a year now. What sold me was the fact that there is no measurable curve, period. Anyway, I'm writing to ask you what you think of the plasma electric sky. I think they are onto something and it needs to be researched. As also for the last week here in Seymour, the moon has been visible all day long. It is also very high in the sky and appears to be transparent. You could see the blue sky through it. It's very odd. Do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the noble gases and the thing the Globebusters was talking about, I, I think it's very possible. And if anyone wants to, to look that up, I can't remember what the videos are called exactly, but type in Flat Earth Noble Gases or Flat Earth Noble, and you should, you should find all that stuff. I also just watched your New Clues video. You know as well as we do, they will never accept any challenge from any Flat Earther, but it's a nice thought. But keep doing what you're doing because I need more videos to watch. <laughs> That's from Chris. Very welcome, Chris. This one's called My Apologies. Mark, I feel badly about comments I left in your video a few days back in regards to yourself, Patricia, and the documentary. I am not in any place or position to judge, nor should I have. I was wrong, and they have been deleted. Yeah, but I didn't, okay, but I didn't watch them. Or didn't read them. Uh, Truthfully, I was watching Math Powerland for some reason and I was triggered. I realize this means so little, but for what it's worth, I do apologize. I have followed you since the first clue and will support you until your last. Math didn't start this movement. It has been going on for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And over the last four years, he has in reality done very little for the awakening. On a side note, I did unsub from Patricia months ago, but still catch the show on your channel, mainly for the insights, due to the fact that during her live chats on multiple occasions, the mods that were selected were overly bashing Jesus, and for this, I will not stand. God bless, and may the strength of many, once and for all, break the chains to the shroud that clouds our lives and minds. Thanks and God's bless. Thanks and God, God bless, Jim Shapa. Uh, cool I, and uh, again no no hard feelings i mean i people leave bad comments all the time that's what they do and the fact that you wrote me and gave me your email address and your phone number fantastic great thanks thanks for being transparent and thank you for being honest and you know just trying to do my do my job here which is open up the minds of everybody trying to be the the freshman recruiter for the flat earth movement uh for flat earth university and trying to, to wake people up. That's all I'm trying to do. Same with Patricia. Same with anybody else that's, that's, that's out there doing this stuff. I don't know if there are any shills in Flat Earth. There's some people that, that go off the rails from time to time. But I'm, I'm trying my best not to be one of them. So thank you for that. I will take off the curse. How's that? This one's called Quote For You. I bet it's a movie quote. The Mark, the entirety of works by humanity. No, it's not a, not a movie quote. The entirety of works by humanity have all been conceived, designed, and constructed according to the specifications that correctly assume that Earth is flat and stationary. Everything. That's from Scott. Cool. Awesome. This one's called 13. Right on, right on. <laughs> That's from Chip Baker. Because he saw clues 13. That's when I... We're, we're, we're catching up slowly but surely. We're catching up on the emails. And I'm trying to screen more. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen... Remember, the first 11 clues were compiled together in a whole bunch of uh, compilations. One was called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. One was called Under the Dome Full Documentary. And then I released clue 12. And then recently I released clue 13, which was... Uh, the lost nail and then i just did 14 which was the coat of credibility so if you haven't seen either of those look them up flat earth clues 13 or clues 14 this one's called the rock mark dude i have been listening to you for years and found out that you also grew up on the rock oh he's talking about whidbey island way to represent did you grow up in coopville or further south did you ever check out the cave at deception pass 
Great job. Keep at it. Curtis Lankford. Uh, I grew up in the South End, so Whidbey Island is very thin. It's only three or four miles wide, but it's very long. It's about 50 miles long. And on the North End is a Navy base up towards the, uh, the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Uh, also up there is the San Juan Islands, and so that's Oak Harbor up in the North End. In the middle of the island, as you can imagine, there's not many people. So it's a little town called Coopville. And then on the South End, which is also known as South Whidbey, that's where there's a ferry system. So there's a bridge on the north end that, that takes you off island if you want. And on the south end, the only way to get off is by a ferry boat, which takes cars and people, and it's jammed up every weekend because this is a great place to hang out during the summer. And did he write another note? Nope. Nope. All right. This one's called Survival Guide, Please. That's from Heath Lentz. Yep. I sent him a survival guide. This one's called Mark. Watch James May steps into a vacuum chamber. James May at the edge of space, BBC on YouTube. Yeah, so I made Clue 13, which is a challenge to anyone out there in the scientific community. Find me any old NASA suit. I don't care. It can be from the 60s. And then put me and somebody else into a vacuum chamber. I really, really would like somebody else from the science community. And let me tell, tell me how I'm going to stay alive. And what's interesting is when you look up people in a vacuum chamber on YouTube, the first one that comes to the top of the list is James May from the BBC show Top Gear. And they put him, it's not even a, an astronaut suit. They just put him in a pressurized suit known as a G-force suit that pilots use. And they put him and he couldn't have been more scared. And when they put him, when they made that chamber go vacuum, and it wasn't obviously a pure vacuum, but it had to been at least 95%. He went stiff as a board because, again, the pressure in the suit is going to expand the suit and you're not going to be able to move. And it wasn't like he was walking around with this thing. He was frozen and they only kept him in it for a few seconds and then they turned it off. Very, very interesting. This one's called Flat Earth Theory is versus Common Sense. Mark, oh, Mark, the Earth is round. If you want to know more about this fact, please respond. Also, please tell me your evidence and research you have done on this subject because all flat earth evidence has been debunk. He, he actually didn't put D on the end of that and he didn't sign his name and he didn't use his real name. His email handle is balance bear and his email address is chips360100 at gmail.com, which I'm sure isn't real. So yeah, every once in a while I get these. Just to let you know, it's not it's not perfect, but most of the time it's anonymous. So trolls out there, be better trolls. I, you're gonna come at me again. Here's a perfect example. Tried to send an uh, anonymous email to me, and it didn't do anything. This one's called night vision goggles. Hey Mark, what are the night vision goggles you use? Been wanting to get some, but I can't remember which ones you said you have. Also, when is the documentary coming out? Thanks for all your work from Michael Davis. Okay, the night vision goggles, just so you know, you can get these on Amazon. If you have the money, I... Okay, let's... First things first. The ones I use are Night Owl, 5 Power, so 5X, night vision binoculars. Don't get monoculars, that's only one, uh, unless you've got really, really good single eye vision. Um, having the vision in stereo really, really, really helps. And... Uh, they run about 450 bucks. I've tried a whole bunch of different ones, and these are these work perfectly fine for what you need them for. They're only Generation 1, but that's because Generation 2 and Generation 3 are, are way more expensive. For example, if you, can, if you have the money, if you can afford them, uh, they cost about $2,000, and you can get Generation 2 in like a 10 power. It's not Night Owl, it's something else, but 10 power would be really, really cool. And... Uh, the difference between Gen 1 and Gen 2 is clarity. Now, most of the time, night vision binoculars are used down here on the ground. So when you're looking at somebody, the difference is you'll be able to tell if the person coming at you through the tree line are friend or foe. Gen, Gen 1 are, are, are mostly for long distance viewing. And that's perfect for, for looking up in the sky and seeing what's flying around up there. So there you go. Oh, I'm sorry. And when's the documentary coming out? I don't know. 
when the documentary is coming out. They're still looking for a distributor. I hope they find it. I think it would be the greatest recruiting tool to date for the Flat Earth community, even though I know the community itself wouldn't be real keen on the whole thing because there are people in the documentary that aren't Flat Earthers, like a scientist, like an astronaut, like a psychologist, just name a few. And you have to you have to have them in there. You've got to keep the audience comfort level somewhat stable. Otherwise, you know, they might be walking out of the theater. And that we proved that because when we were up there at the film festival in Toronto, there were a lot of globalists that came up to us afterwards asking questions. That's the whole point of this. Does it prompt people to ask questions? Yes, it does. Does it completely convince them of Flat Earth? No, it's not a nuts and bolts movie. It is not a uh, proof versus non-proof movie. It is just a people of Flat Earth, very nice people, and you should get to know them. So, moving on. This one's called Translation to Your Video. Hi from Italy. Beg your pardon, I translated your video, Flat Earth Clues 13, The, Nos the Lost Nail in Italian. The language is here. Only after I posted it, I realized this is your work and not from Celebrate Truth. Ciao and thanks a lot. That's from Dino Tinelli. He's out in Ravenna, out in Italy. Yeah, cool. If anyone wants to use the clues, their Creative Commons license, translate them to whatever you want and put them out there. Have fun with it. I know they're in Spanish and French and Italian and German, Russian, um, some African dialects. I don't know too many others other than that. But yeah, take what. And if you need transcripts, uh, I mean, they're closed captioned anyway, but if you need the actual transcripts of the clues, I'm, I'm more than happy to send them to you. This one's called Hi from Michael Kirby. Hey, Mark, are you getting this? My last attempt bounced. Yeah. Yeah, I did get it. Remember, my email address is msergeant23 at comcast.net. It's on the, the description section of every single video that I make, along with my physical address, if you want to send me anything, um, and my phone number. It's, I'm about as transparent as you can get. This one's called More Plates. And it's loading. Hi, Mark. Four new plates for your compilation. And that's from... Michael's Crown and Bass up in Ontario, Canada. Thank you for that. I am using those in the compilation. If you guys have any Flat Earth license plate and you want to take a picture of it and send it to me, I will use it in various slideshows. I've had a lot of fun with that so far. Even put it in my latest channel trailer. Just did rapid fire, uh, intersplicing with a lot of other Flat Earth pictures. This is called Flat Earth Questions. Hello, Mark. I am Ian Yomans from Grand Block West Middle School. I'm in eighth grade and I'm doing my research project on the flat earth theory. Part of my research is to contact a primary resource. I have about a week to get this information. Would answering some of my questions via email or phone be something you would consider? Yes, it would. And he gave me his phone number and yes, I did contact them. And yeah, I, I'm more than happy. I've talked to high school newspapers, in this case, a junior high newspaper. I've talked to major networks. I, I, don't really differentiate between the two because if it helps people wake up, I'm all for it. I don't care what kind of group it is. This one's a um, little long. Probably shouldn't read this one. Okay, one second. This one's called Pluto Close Up and Reaction. Hey, Mark, the attached YouTube link is a video showing NASA a few years back presenting new, never before seen close up images at the time of Pluto captured during the flyby of the New Horizon space probe. The reaction of the audience when noticing the similarity of planet Pluto to the cartoon character Pluto is priceless. First, a gasp with disbelief, laughter mixed in, followed by acceptance applause. The ignorance of humanity once again raises its head. The reaction one would have expected should have been shouts of fraud, fake liars with etc. Nope, it was celebration for another amazing accomplishment by NASA. Yeah. The, that, w w that's, by the way, one of the reasons I made Clue 14, which was the code of credibility. Most people, including the media, take what science says as gospel. They, anyone with a white lab coat, whatever they say, they, they get more credibility. And that's why I made the coat. It's like, look, it's, in fact, the coat was designed to give doctors and pharmacists more credibility. It was, it was a uniform. 
It's like, oh yeah, we know what we're doing. We, you know, we're professional. It's a professional uniform. Genius, really, because over the years, over the generations, we have now taken it as men of science, men of higher education, men who know more than we do, which just simply is not the case. If you want more information, please, by all means, watch Flat Earth Clues 14, The Coat of Credibility. This one's called Magic School Bus Netflix Gets Lost in Space, a children's 90, 90s TV show. Is about flat earth mark in the episode gets lost in space they get they try to convince one students they are actually in space the student they are trying to convince is clearly a flat earther i've never realized this until now that the popular cartoon magic school bus had so many flat earth clues yep very very interesting this one's called truman show alternate ending Mark, have you seen the alternate ending in Truman? Truman falls off the platform and the outside of the door and is impaled on the spire as his fans watch. A warning to stay in the dome, perhaps? Anyway, just a nugget for you, Chip. If, no, I have not watched that, you know, and, and I will I will definitely look that up. I will I will check that out. Oh, that's right. I got to remember there's a um, email I want to end this with here pretty quick which was somebody that that re reviewed clue 14 and he was he was sort sort of disappointed not not terrible but I want to read it for you this one's called the astronaut's new suit but he hasn't got anything on a little child said did you ever hear such innocent prattle says said its father and one person whispered to another what the child had said he hasn't anything on a child says he hasn't anything on but he hasn't got anything on the whole town cried out at last the emperor shivered for he suspected that they were right but he thought the procession has got to go on so he walked more proudly than ever and his nobleman held high the train that wasn't there at all nasa has to take the same route that's from, also from Chip. Thanks for that. I'm I'm dying actually to watch the Truman Show alternate ending because it sounds horrible. This one's called Clue Thirteen. This is from AC three sixty. <laughs> Somehow I don't think it's Anderson Cooper three sixty. Uh, Mark Clue Thirteen hits the nail on the head. Nice. Thank you for that. It's clever. This one's called I fell asleep listening to you and hot sex shouldn't have. Mark, I was listening to show 153. I think that was the show number I was going to bed. I ended up falling asleep and then you were in my dream. You always joke about hot sex, th that we shouldn't fall asleep to you, and it turns out that you were right. You drove us to a private hotel, oh boy, where they gave you anything you requested, like that oversized bed. I won't share any more details, but I think you get the idea. Now that I'm awake, I plan to re-listen to the show. Thanks for the dream date. It's signed, Donna. <laughs> yeah, this is why you get seriously, guys. Don't don't listen to me while you're going to sleep. I, I don't do deliberate ASMR stuff, but some people say that I, I kind of crawl into their dreams from time to time, and I I'm not trying to do that. I'm I'm just trying to read stuff. But thank you for that, Donna, and, and I hope Hope whatever happened at said hotel was fun. This one's called Quilting in Space. Hi, Mark. Love your YouTube channel. I'm not good at spotting the fakery, but I'm sure you could find lots wrong with this if you're so inclined. And it's a Facebook story, and it says, NASA astronaut Karen Nyberg explains how to quilt in space. Yeah, because that's what you would be doing. You'd be quilting in space, I swear. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll do two more, and then we'll jump over to the uh, Clue 14 review. This one's called Hi, Tom Shelton. Mark, have not found out where you talk on this planet incoming system yet. Went to 73. Anyway, the incoming bodies are real and not a light show. Sun orbit reaction producing red rays down word every morning he spelled morning differently but a little later each day on skyline greece and crete at 7 26 a.m washington time this morning talking observable reaction and at times violent sky flashing all seen live camera real and solid holograms maybe i guess but huge ridges valleys on one of the orbs tom 63 years old studying observing for over two years okay i have really no response to that one 
Uh, let's see. Can I do one more before I... Okay, let's do one more and then I'll, I'll close with the review. This one's called Perspective on a Flat Earth. Hello, my name is Cristano Brandio. I'm a civil engineer and today I have a discussion with one friend, which is an architect, regarding the perspective and geometry of the sun movements on a flat earth. And I would like to have your input, if possible, on two subjects. One is the fact that in a sunset on a flat earth, the sun would have to decrease in size and disappear on the vanishing point. And we have seen the sun disappear on the horizon of the sea with a substantial size. The other is how does it work on a flat earth? plane the angle that can be measured between both solstice northern and southern of around 47 degrees uh yeah look up just do searches on ditrh's channel or jaren's channel or globusters channel or zeteticism.com and type in flat earth sun or flat earth sunset you'll get all the answers you need okay let's jump into what's this one's called uh, disappointed by Clue 14. Dear Mark, okay to read on air. Clue 13 was phenomenal, absolutely brilliant. Clue 14 was well done and keeping in style with the other clues. It made excellent points and provided a good discussion about Bill Nye and other scientists. However, I was rather disappointed that there was absolutely no mention of the Stanley Milgram experiment. We can no longer do such an experiment, but I was allowed, it was allowed and performed back in the 1960s under the orders of a man in a white coat up to two out of three of the subjects continued administering shocks of increasing levels to the point of death. Shocks and death were faked, but the subjects didn't know this. If you are not familiar with this experiment, please see this article and short embedded video. Why is it so important? Because it would have given this Clue 14 the home run that you achieved with Clue 13 and the others. The experiment shows that human beings are likely to do almost anything, including killing another human being, just because an authority figure has ordered them to do so. You know I love your work and very appreciat appreciative of all the hard work, long hours, and relentless dedication to this community. I have the highest respect for you and all the other major players in FE. Yes, you too, Patricia. So please do not be offended by this small piece of construction criticism please take it in stride perhaps you can make a companion video or discuss it on the secret show or strange world milgram has clearly demonstrated the power of the white coat wishing you all the best jack frost no okay first off i am not and we'll end on this one i am not offended in any way by this criticism and yes i was fully aware of that particular experiment but i chose deliberately not to go down that road because i didn't want to make clue 14 a dark and brooding clue i want to keep it somewhat light as many of my clues are and for those of you who don't know what the experiment is I don't, I know he'll, Jack Frost will probably argue with me and say that it was absolutely the white coat, but it wasn't just the white coat. Remember, the, the clue 14 I had was literally talking about the white coat. It wasn't, it wasn't really talking about the authority figures because the people in that experiment who shocked other people off camera, who they did not see, they weren't really shocking them. The, the reason why they did it was because they were given a way out. The responsibility was taken from them. It wasn't that the people in the, in the white coats knew more than they did or were smarter. It's that they pretty much gave them a release form. And that is, one, people will do a lot of things. This is Basically, this is the soldier's argument, which is as long as you're given orders by someone of higher authority, you're going to do what they'd say. So a soldier kills people because the officers tell them to kill people. And in this case, the, the lab, the, the lab uh, experiment guys, they were told to keep shocking the people, which they could not see. And they said, am I going to get in trouble for this? This is a big thing. As long as, as long as I'm not on the hook, it's kind of like, it's, if I'm not going to get convicted of murder or anything else, if I'm completely relinquished from, from all responsibility, then that's, that's what they did. It wasn't just the white coat. Uh, it wasn't like they blindly said, you know, they, they asked them, the people are like, are you sure? You know, they went back to them. They were questioning. They weren't questioning the coat. The, the people were questioning the authority and the people said, oh yeah, you're totally off the hook. You're totally fine. You just keep doing it. We, we know, you know, we know what we're doing. So it was kind of a mix, but no, I, I couldn't bring it in there because it, it took a dark turn. I, I know in your case, you, you want it to be a, a dark and brooding clue with this. And 
I, 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 it couldn't because it wasn't, in my opinion, the only reason why the Milgram experiment went the way it did. But it is very, very interesting. I will say that. So that's it. That's all I got. So thank you for everybody who wrote in so far. And everybody's going to write into the future. The uh, email address you can contact me is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.